Hello 3D printing friends, today on the BB3D channel we'll learn how to update your Ender 3 V2 to the current version of Creality's firmware right after this. I'm Brian and you are watching BB3D. Hi, welcome back. Okay, so today we're updating this Ender 3 V2's firmware to the current version from Creality. Creality has a lot of different firmware files, but I'll go over what you need to know to pick the right one. Now, despite this Micro Swiss NG Direct Drive extruder, which, by the way, I like, this printer is otherwise stock. There's no bed probe or filament sensor in play here, so all I'm looking for is the current firmware for a stock Ender 3 V2. Before starting, it's a good idea to review the settings in your printer's firmware. For example, if you've carefully tuned the steps per millimeter for the X, Y, or Z axis, or the extruder, you'll want to jot those down. The firmware update might overwrite those settings with standard values, so you'll be happy to have your custom values handy if that happens. Before we jump into downloading firmware files, there are some pieces of information that we need to get from the printer. Creality shipped these with different mainboard versions, so we'll need to remove the cover on the electronics box to see whether it's a version 422 mainboard or a version 427 mainboard. Due to supply chain issues, Creality also used different microcontrollers on the mainboards, so we'll also need to check whether the microcontroller on the board was made by ST Microelectronics or Giga Device. So, remove the four screws that hold the cover in place on the electronics box. There's one on the top and three on the bottom. And on the bottom screws, one of them is longer than the others, and it goes toward the back of the printer. So with those screws removed, you can move the cover out of the way. But it's still got a fan on it that's still attached to the mainboard, so either unplug the fan or be careful with the wires. Here's a close-up look at my printer's mainboard, and you can see it's a Revision 4.2.2 board. The microcontroller at position U7 on the board is made by ST Microelectronics. Its part number starts with STM, and it has the ST Microelectronics logo on it. And here's a picture of a version 4.2.2 mainboard with a Giga Device microcontroller at position U7. Its part number starts with GD, and it has the Giga Device logo on it. So having identified the board revision and the microcontroller, replace the cover on the electronics box. Now open a web browser on your computer and go to CrealityCloud.com. Click Software and Firmware on the navigation bar at the top, then click the Firmware tab. Click Ender Series from the list on the left side of the screen. Then you can filter for your printer and board type. Click the Printer Type pop-up and select Ender 3 V2. Click the Main Board Version pop-up and select either V4.2.2 or V4.2.7. I'll select the 4.2.2 board since that's what I have. Now that reduces the list of possible downloads to a measly 17 files. If your main board has the Giga Device microcontroller on it, there are really only two files for you. One for a printer with a BL Touch installed and one for a printer without. These are identified by the letters GD in the file name. All the rest of these files are for the 4.2.2 main boards with the STM chip. The second file in the list is the one to choose for a stock Ender 3 V2, and it's build 1.0.7 of Creality's firmware. By the way, if you installed a Sprite extruder upgrade kit on your Ender 3 V2, you should select the file with Sprit Ext in the name. This firmware will allow you to set the extruder temperature up to 300 degrees Celsius. Some of the files have a description associated with them, and pointing to description will display more information. So anyway, I'll click Ender 3 V2 HW V4.2.2 SW V1.0.7 to download the firmware for my printer. After expanding the zip archive that was downloaded, open the folder. There are two items here, a folder named Display Firmware and a firmware file whose name ends with .bin. If you downloaded a different firmware file, it may not include the display firmware. If it doesn't, that's okay. I want to update the firmware on the main board first, so I'm going to copy that firmware file to a freshly formatted 8GB microSD card. Then I'll eject that card and take it over to the printer. With the printer off, insert the card, then turn the printer on. After a few seconds of a black screen, the printer will boot. You can verify the version of the firmware by checking the info section from the printer's screen. 
Speaking of the screen, let's update the firmware on that as well. Now you can skip this if the firmware you downloaded didn't include a display firmware folder, but since the file I downloaded did, I'm going to do it. First, let's get the screen ready for updating. Turn off the printer. Unsnap the screen from its bracket and unplug the ribbon cable from the back of the screen. Remove the four hex socket screws and then remove the back of the screen. On the screen's circuit board, you'll see a micro SD card slot, and we'll use that in just a minute. For now, remove the micro SD card from the printer, and then insert it into the card reader on the computer. Delete the main board firmware file from the card. Open the display firmware folder from the downloaded files. Copy the three folders inside, dwin underscore set, private, and tjc underscore set, to the 8GB micro SD card. Eject the card from the computer, then insert it into the card slot on the back of the screen. The contacts on the card should face the board, and the card label should face up. Plug the ribbon cable back into the screen, and then turn the printer on. The screen will be black for a moment, and then turn blue, and after a few more seconds, it'll turn red. Once it turns red, the firmware update is done. Note that if the screen is blue only for a split second, that means the screen doesn't like the way the card is formatted. It only seems to like cards that are 8 gigabytes or less in capacity and are formatted as a FAT32 volume with 4K byte allocation blocks. If that happens to you, there's a video linked in the description with instructions on properly formatting the card. Okay, so with the red screen indicating that the screen firmware update is complete, turn the printer off, remove the card from the card slot, Unplug the ribbon cable from the screen. Replace the back of the screen and screw it in place. Plug the ribbon cable into the screen again and snap the screen onto its bracket. Then turn the printer on again and you can enjoy your printer with its freshly updated firmware. Now remember when I mentioned writing down any custom settings in the printer's firmware? You might want to review your steps per millimeter or other custom settings to make sure they're still at the values you expect. So that's all there is to updating the firmware on an Ender 3 V2, and this procedure should work for several other printers in the Ender 3 line as well, as long as they're running 32-bit mainboards. Big thanks to everyone who supports the channel, whether with channel memberships or using the links in the description. If you liked this episode, give it a thumbs up and maybe consider subscribing so you don't miss future episodes. Well, 3D printing friends, that's about all the time we have for this episode, and now that we're at the end, let's go print something cool.